Pleasure to be here and to talk about my favorite subject again. Um, those of you from the last Council of Council meetings will perhaps remember me, but uh, it's one of, my, one of the things I like to talk about and I like to do, and it's something my family has a hard time understanding. <laughs> I'm here to talk about a study that we did on behalf of Metro Vancouver that was commissioned <clears throat> based on a resolution by the Board of Directors to look at what happens after recycling. Uh, there is a clear commitment within Metro Vancouver, and this was part of our terms of reference to the zero waste challenge, 70% or more. Uh, it's not limited to 70%, of course. Our goal is to look at what happens with the rest of the 30%, 25%, what, 20%, whatever it is in the end, there is still going to be something in the foreseeable future and we're going to look at that. And these are the volumes that we have to deal with. And as you can see by this line and the dates, uh, right now it's a little bit flat because of a somewhat subdued economic activity, but generally waste volumes increase with population increases. Um, and we're trying to offset that in the waste management business by diverting more, by recycling more, by buying less packaging, doing all these zero waste things. And you can see that in about 2010, 2011, the, waste <clears throat> the zero waste challenge will take effect and the waste volumes for, diver for landfill will actually go down. The waste that we have are currently sending to landfill and waste energy plants will go down. And we are assuming for the purpose of this study that by 2015 we will have a reached 70%. Of course, it won't stop there, but it's, we, we have to make some conditions for a study. So we, we used this as a basis. And you can see after that it starts to climb again, assuming that population increases as well. So in 2015, we have over a million tons, 1.1 million tons of waste that we have to treat in some other way. And by 2020, which is where we do our sort of steady state life cycle analysis of, of, uh, of environmental in assessment, uh, we're already at about 1.26 million tons. So it keeps growing, we have to deal with it, hopefully through diversion, but there will always be some. So what technologies do we have available? Um, certainly, uh, you've heard a lot about MBT, mechanical biological treatment, waste to energy, everyone knows what that is, and of course we all know what landfills are. MBT, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. Um, those of you who were here last year will uh, perhaps remember the presentation by Dr. Egan Archer on MBT. And his final statement was, it's not a silver bullet, but it's a useful technology for processing waste. Mechanically, you can pull some more recyclables out of it that haven't been caught at, at source. And then you can biologically treat it to dry it, to make it either into a fuel that you can use uh, basically a refuse-derived fuel or a stable product that you can landfill where it does not generate leachate uh, and it does not generate landfill gas, or at least a lot less of both of those. And landfill gas, as everyone knows, is a uh, contributor to climate change. Here's a picture of an MBT facility in Edmonton. This is the interior where the biological process takes place. It is the size of 14 NHL rinks. Um, it's, a, it's a huge facility, it's very highly me mechanized, and, um, and it treats about 200,000 tons a year. Waste to energy, um, this is just a picture of a nice waste to energy plant. There are some ugly ones in this world too, but we chose a, a, a pretty looking one. Um, this is a well-proven technology. Um, there are 800 waste to energy plants using mass burn technology in this world and um, they recover energy very efficiently. We chose mass burn for this study simply because it's the most proven technology. There are other technologies out there, and ultimately the market will determine which one is applied where and when. Um, but this is the one that we have used in the study. We, all of our data that we used for emissions and energy efficiencies are based on real operating facilities operating somewhere in the world. Uh, there are no theoretical values in our study. And landfills also have come a long way. Uh, we applied a state-of-the-art landfill in our model and in our study. Uh, landfills, as you all know, are basically 
Um, containment devices, you can sort of imagine like, a, like an oversized swimming pool where you put the waste and store it indefinitely, hoping that it will, and it will in fact, <clears throat> decompose over time, generating landfill gas which can be captured and used for energy, and it also generates leachate which has to be uh, pulled out or treated in some form. Uh, the newer forms of landfill are bioreactors, and that's what we used here, where the process is accelerated by recirculating leachate, adding a bit of water, basically um, causing an anaerobic digestion process to occur faster. And that way we get more landfill gas out faster and can use it uh, beneficially. We looked at how do we, how do we apply these technologies and really, it's not a question of do we go to a landfill or do we put it all through an incinerator? Um, and I'm using the word incinerator here because that's what we all understand. You know, waste to energy sounds nice. Uh, and the Europeans still use the word incineration, and really that's what it is. We are, we are burning the waste, and we're taking the energy out of it. And, but we're not comparing one or the other because it's not one or the other. It's an integrated system. All of our scenarios that we've developed, and we've developed eight of them, include the continued use of the Vancouver landfill, they include continued use of the existing waste to energy plant that owned by Metro Vancouver in Burnaby. It's one of the North America's leading facilities. It's a model facility. It's working very well and it's been operating since 1987. So right, for, right off the start we have two technologies that are included and then we have added to the scenarios MBT where appropriate for different, different options. Um, we have, with these eight scenarios, developed uh, all what you could call bookends. So these are not the scenarios that Metro Vancouver will necessarily go forward with. They are examples to provide an understanding of what the possibilities are and what the results and, and the effects of these different possibilities. It's a decision-making tool, essentially. In this presentation, we've limited it to three. Um, just to give you a flavor, these are sort of extreme cases. One is where the additional waste to energy capacity is maximized. Uh, one is where MBT is um, uh, applied to stabilize the waste before it's put into a landfill. And the third one is basically no additional treatment. Uh, the, we continue with the existing waste to energy plant. The Vancouver landfill continues to accept waste and everything else goes to an out of region new landfill. Now, I'm not going to go into this in a lot of detail, um, but the shaded ones are the three that we're looking at. Um, you can see the different colors. On the bottom is the contribution that, to treatment that the existing waste to energy plant makes. And from left to right, it sort of progresses from more waste to energy. And on the far right, it's mostly landfill. And in between, we have uh, two scenarios with differing amounts of waste to energy, and then we have two with, with MBT that creates a fuel. Uh, we have one where uh, waste is shipped raw out of the region to a private facility. Uh, the one with the green, the number six there, that is where we make all of the waste into a stable product and put it into the Vancouver landfill. And then seven is mostly uh, Vancouver landfilling with some out of region and eight, which is we're using it as an example, is some to the Vancouver landfill and mostly to an out of region landfill. So we've got most of the bases covered. The reality will always be a slightly different mixture, but I think this will give a pretty good idea of what we can expect. <clears throat> 